Oh. Hi everybody, it's Agnes and welcome to a Valentine's Day interview with Mr. Scottish Joe. Hello, Scottish Joe. <laughs> that was my Thanks accent. for the English accent. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That was a really bad accent. Oh, Very good start. I'm Great sorry. start to the video. I'm let's, practicing. <laughs> let's mock the Scottish man with an English accent. <laughs> exactly. Very good start. Well, welcome. You, get, thank you. It's good to see It'll you. It'll get again. really bad when I start doing a New Zealand accent to mock you. <laughs> That's when we're going to yeah. have issues. Yeah, well, Dan, Dan always does a British accent and... For my Australian one, he always goes yeah. in. English I go, I'm not, I'm not English. I'm, I'm Australian, and he just does a really bad Australian. I'm not. So. <laughs> can't help it. Can't help it. So, you and I are going. Oh, brilliant! Absolutely brilliant. Talk you about. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk oh, about man. a Valentine's Day today. A little bit to start, because yeah. women and you know, we just don't know about men and Valentine's Day, whether they are interested in it, whether they just feel pressured by it, whether they think it's just a load of stuff. They really yeah. have no idea. So I am doing an interview with seven men leading up to Valentine's Day. And you are one of those seven men. And we're... Aren't I the lucky one? Yeah, we, we're all the viewers. <laughs> are, the viewers are lucky because it's always a good chat with you. So what do you think, Thank Joe? You. What do you think? Well, well, I mean, for me, personally, I've never had too much, you know, focus on Valentine's Day, if I'm honest. I've never really made it a thing. I mean, for me, I'm quite a, I'm quite an outgoing, quite a loving person anyway. So a lot of what's my belief about the actual day in particular is why are we restricting it to one day? So why is it just one day where you have to celebrate your love for that person? Why is that a thing? Um, and I get that it's a celebration. It's almost kind of like a birthday where you celebrate the day you were born and stuff like that and Christmas where you celebrate that. So I do understand the concept behind it. But for me, I, I don't think it should really just be restricted to one day. Mm. Um, what was coming up for me where I was thinking about, you know, in the lead up to filming this is I think a lot of what's going to come up is a, a difference between conditional and unconditional love. Um, the reason behind that is... I think with conditional love, especially in Valentine's Day, is you feel almost obliged mm. to have all these different, you know, energies, this different, you know, portrayal of how much I love this person. But I think a lot of that can be triggered by they should do the same for me and, you know, in the, to, to get it in return. But for me, I think if, if you unconditionally love someone, you would give them that love every single day, the, the same level of love every single day for as long for as long as you you know you wanted to effectively without expecting anything in return so for me um i think a lot of it seems to be centered on conditional love um i mean it's it's one day where you feel like or there's a i think there's a social pressure attached to it also where perhaps perhaps women expect um, women who are probably not in such a very good self-loving place, actually, I would say. Maybe a bit controversial, but they expect the guy to do a lot of work for them on this particular day, where the, yeah. it's the guy's obligation to put so much love to this person for this one particular day. Yeah. But I think if you're in a good self-loving place, you would give yourself that all year round, like every single day, and you would you would receive it from people more frequently, and you would receive it more naturally instead of it yeah. being just the one day. So for me, um, it's never really been a big thing about you know celebrating it so much. Um, it's more about you know I want to you know I want to share my love with people more consistently instead of just celebrating it for a day if i want to celebrate a day with a specific person in a relationship it would be their birthday i think that's it's a little bit more of a more of a celebration yeah um and valentine's day obviously it'd be nice to you know to treat someone and stuff like that but i think i think if you unconditionally love someone and you have that love from yourself you would do that anyway i think you would do that more frequently and i felt a little bit more naturally and i think it would probably be more appreciated if i'm honest um, because I think you would realise that it's not coming from need, if that makes sense. 
Mm. So, yeah, that, that, that's probably my feelings about, you know, Valentine's Day in general. I don't know what your take is on that, if you think that, you know, makes quite sense or not. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, I think, look, I, I think as women, we just have no idea really what men think about it. And yeah. we're, we're so busy looking at what, are, what is a man giving me? What is a man giving me? It's, and it's, I just think that needs some work. Like what you said, you give it to yourself and then you naturally receive from others, but then you're in a state that you don't need it. It's, yeah. just, it's just a bonus. Exactly. And I think that being in a relationship with a woman that's in that state or a man, if you're gay, you know, or two yeah, women, it doesn't matter that when you're in a partnership of whatever gender matchup you've got, that you are two people who are coming from a place of giving and then the fun yeah. and the joy and the, you don't go into all that. Oh, they didn't give me anything and they never think about me. And you know, that stuff, which is entitlement, I'm entitled kind of thinking, which that yeah. vibration never attracts anything. Absolutely, yeah, that, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm. And it's important, I think, for, you know, for, I think it's interesting to say, but, you know, like, same, like, same gender relationships. Mm. I think a lot of it is the same. And again, we talk about it all the time. It's it's centered around self-love. If you're, if you're in that place of feeling like, you're, you know, you deserve this or you deserve better or you, you're entitled, as you say, entitled is quite a good way to describe it. If you're entitled to better, Mm. then you're never really going to have it. I, I would, I would, because as you say, you're, you're do, that's from an energy of lack and it's an energy of not having it, not feeling it about yourself. Yep. I mean, for me personally, I, pre, I predominantly feel good about myself most mm. of the time. And I think you, you learn your own worth. But I think it's important to distinguish between understanding your own worth in one aspect and then not using that to say I'm entitled to this. I think if you know your own worth, then that's a really good self-love in place. Mm. But if you if you then start using that with a lacking energy attached to it, saying I that then I am now entitled to this, or I deserve this, or I should be getting this, mm. not having it yourself, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So for me, it's all about um, knowing within your own self-worth and believing that mm. you're worthy of, any, of anything and you can have anything you want, yeah. but it all comes from within. Oh, you can have it. And then, yeah, you can have it, but then you share it and mm. people share it with you. They don't, they don't give, they, they share. And I think that's probably the difference between, you know, giving love and radiating love. I think if you're radiating love, you're doing it from a place of wholeness, a place of complete, a place of completion. Mm. And you, you, you radiate that out to people and you just give, you, you give them that energy. There's an unconditional energy attached to it where you're just radiating out and you just, you have so much love for that person because you have so much love for yourself. Mm. And as we say about Neville, with being you pushed out, they are a reflection of you. You may not realize it at the time, but they're a reflection of you. But when you, if you project that they're not giving me enough, they don't treat me yep. the way I expect to be treated, or it's, it's Valentine's Day, they should be doing this for me. That's a projection of what's going on inside you. So they will yeah. continue to, yeah. you know, reflect that back to you. And that's People getting, it's like getting that. thinking, getting, getting, yeah, getting. Yeah, yeah, trying to pull, yeah, exactly. Trying to trying to suck the energy out of someone. Mm. And that's, that's not a nice place to be in either. Um, yeah. You have to give that to yourself and then, I think when you're feeling good like that as well, you start your your. I think your perception of people changes, and that's when the everyone you pushed out changes. I think mm. that's where that where you feel that shift as well. Yeah. Um. If you start feeling good about yourself, you can start looking at the positives in people. Um. And you can start seeing what they are actually doing for you on a regular basis, and how they are sharing their love with you instead of giving their love to you. Um, I think when you're in such a better place, that makes a difference. Um, but yeah, it's for me, <clears throat> Valentine's has never really been a, a big thing where I felt the need to celebrate it. If I'm yep. with someone, I celebrate my love for them every single day. Mm. And that's it. I just give them all the love that, that I want to give. And actually, yeah. it was probably coming from a place of need, think, you know, expecting it back. But now it's a case of I'm going to love... I'm just going to give love to that person. I'm just going to give them good energy and I'm just going to give it coming, knowing that I can give it to people that I want to give it to. Mm. Yep. 
Lovely, lovely, lovely. You know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's so much more. Do you find the day, you know, the whole chocolate and flowers commercial side of it, do you, do you feel any pressure from that when you're in a relationship or you just ignore it? Um, I try my best to block it out. Yeah. Um, I think there's, as I said before, yeah, I think there's a very, there's a social pressure attached to the day yeah. now. I think there's a social, um, you know, almost an economic pressure attached to the day yeah. where you feel like you have, you know, you feel obliged to do it. So mm. if I, I want, and sometimes as well, if, if you're with friends and they're doing something for their partner on Valentine's Day, I think there can be a sort like an ego aspect to it as well, mm-hmm. where you feel like you need to outdo someone. Yes. Which is wrong, which is wrong as well, because, yeah. you know, I mean, what, especially for this one day of the year, this one day, there's another 364 days to go. So yes. you're just going to love the person for one day. I don't, I don't agree with it personally. Yeah, yeah. I don't. As I say, you just love the person consistently and unconditionally mm. through yeah. Yeah. Um I don't know if how how the other guys are gonna be when obviously if they're doing their videos. Um but for me it's just I think there is a there is a social pressure attached to it, especially when you see all the adverts leading up to it where it's all like oh, all these special deals and stuff and which is great for people who want to, you know, participate in it. Yeah. But for me, if if I'm in a relationship with someone, I want to treat that person all the time. I want to give them, mm. I want to give them all the love that I can, and yeah. from a place of giving it, not a place of needing it back. From a place of just caring about that person, mm. I, don't, I don't want to, you know, just wait till one day and then just shiver them. Because I think, in a way as well, that can be quite overwhelming for someone. Even though they may expect that, I think it can be quite overwhelming for someone to have that in just in one day where they're just being shivered left, right and centre with love and then they be, it probably makes them become more expectant and more reliant on that as opposed to it being natural. I think mm. I think there's a, an element of um, I think there's an element of um, fabrication behind it as well but it, it mm. doesn't feel natural. Yes. That's just my personal opinion yeah. of course but yeah. um, I think there's a, I don't think there's anything natural behind it for me. Mm. Um, I think a lot of I mean, for me, I believe a lot. I think a lot of women, I think over time, have probably become more fixated on it being a, a big thing. It's like a, it's a special day for them. Yeah. Um, guys, as far as I'm concerned, I never expect anything. Okay. I never expect. Yeah. Pampered. I never expect anything from anyone. Okay. Um, because if I'm in a, if I'm in a relationship with anyone then for me it's going to be a relationship where it's going to be as i says frequently it's going to be natural it's going to be you know waking up in the morning with someone or having a text from someone when you don't expect that um getting a phone call when you don't expect that all these little things i just think that i think it means a lot more than getting it just for one day um i think the i can understand the concept of celebrating love for that person mm. But I think you should do it. I think it should be more natural. I think you should just be consistent. And, you know, I think when it's consistent, you don't shiver the person with that. Mm. You don't give them it just constant, constant, constant. I think it's just there's a more natural flow behind it. And I think they feel that also. I think that's where energy comes into play as well, Mm. where it just becomes a natural state of being, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I was thinking about, about it when I was driving back to where I am right now. And I was thinking it's like Valentine's Day becomes a proof of love day. How much do you love me day? Yes. You know, and it's like, well, hang on a minute. If you're looking for proof of love, you're not in a loving state within and therefore you're not going to get any proof. <laughs> That's basically a, like you're saying about every, everyone's you pushed out. If you're needing proof, it means you feel unloved. Yes. And if you feel Absolutely. unloved and unwanted, you're going to get the photocopy of more unlovedness and more unwantedness, which means you're not going to get anything. Yeah, so exactly. So actually, it's again, a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, uh, yeah. you know, and what about, you know, you can let yourself off the hook and go, you know what, I'm going to have a really good Valentine's Day, irregardless of what I get, what I don't get. I'm going to enjoy that day. I'm going to do something nice. I'm going to go and, you know, yeah. sit somewhere and celebrate that day and 
hey, let's see if anyone will join me. If anyone's around, it'll just work. Or, it, you know, you can go and celebrate. Two women can go and have a coffee or you, you can go with your girlfriend. I had a guy that I interviewed um, uh, yesterday and he was talking about getting something for Valentine's Day for his mom. And I thought yeah. it's not, doesn't have to be man buys something for woman and then she feels loved and there's yeah. the proof you know it doesn't have to be that template because it's a bit old-fashioned i think um yeah. and i think women that let men off the hook for valentine's day and just love themselves and radiate love out that is the best gift you can give a man is to take that pressure off him 100 percent. Yeah. yeah i totally agree with that mm. yeah it's so true it's interesting that you say that, that you can be used as a proof of how much do you love me. Yeah. That's really interesting because, it, it, again, it's very, very true. Um, you just want, you know, it's the, you put such an energy and such a, an expectation on the day. You put, such a, mm. you put such a requirement on the person to give as well, and that's a, that's a lacking energy. Yeah. It's that person has to give, and they have to give me a lot because if they don't give me a lot, then they don't, you know they don't love me the way I think they love me, and that's yeah. a projection as well. That's a that's how you pushed out. Mm. But for me, it's true. Like how you're going to celebrate that day? Why for me? Why stop there? Why can't you just live every single day in that energy, in that place? If I just love this day, I just love, I love being, I love you know being alive. I'm, I feel I, I'm appreciative for where I am in life. Yeah, and I think. When you're in that grateful energy as well, it's just total gratitude, and you're mm. you're so happy for where you are on a yeah. day to day basis. Like you're grateful for your job, you're grateful for the air, just all these different things. Just I think you, you I think you become more more naturally in a loving place, and mm. then that's when you can start enjoying things, and you can start seeing the positive in things, and you can start just having a better outlook on life. Mm. And, and it's not restricted to one day. It's not restricted yeah. to that day where I'm just going to feel love on this day. But for the other 364 <laughs> days, I'm going to go back to normal. Yeah, exactly. It's, I understand celebrating it, but you've still got to feel it every single day. You've still yeah. got to feel it naturally. Yeah. You've still got to feel good consistently about yourself and mm. not expect it from anyone else and not yes. have that. I mean, there's, there's people out there who may not have been in relationships through Valentine's Day. I mean, I know for me it can be quite rare also. Yeah. But for me it's, so why why put such a fixation on it? It's probably came through beliefs that I've never really been bothered about it because mm. of that. But I've never expected anything from anyone. Yeah. So... Um, well, on, on Valentine's Day, I mean, um, I think before, <clears throat> when I was in quite a low state, I used to expect everyone to give to me. Yes. And that's why I was always lacking. Yes. And then you discover, you know, like your channel, you discover love attraction, you discover self-love. Yeah. And then I think it takes you from that place of expecting it every day to then giving it to yourself every day. It takes, it makes a huge shift and you automatically yeah. just start feeling better. And then I think you become more appreciative of days like Valentine's Day where you can understand the concept behind it. And I think you can look at it from a more conscious a more conscious perspective where it's just another day, but mm. you understand why people celebrate it. Mm. But then you maybe start asking the questions like, are they celebrating it for the right reasons? Is there a good motive behind it? Is there, a, is there, a, is there really a loving energy behind that day? Yeah. Um, and then I think that's when you can start maybe seeing patterns in people gone, especially, I mean, I, I know of people who have been like, oh, my, my partner got me this for Valentine's Day. And then yeah. that person feels, un that automatically puts someone else under pressure. It does. Because then they go, well, my partner didn't get mm. me that much or I didn't get anything. Mm. And people, and then all of a sudden they think, well, why did they get and I didn't? What's wrong with exactly. me? And then it just, it creates such an egotistical yeah. energy. Yeah, and, and Joe, yeah. when you add on top of that, people that go and post on social media what their partners did. Oh, yeah. That just creates what you're saying on a bigger scale. You're looking, oh, Absolutely. look what that person did for that woman or what the, look what that guy did or, you know, you're looking and comparing. And yeah, exactly. that's when you just feel either less than and you feel not good enough and you feel like mm -hmm. no one loves me, no one wants me, whatever, whatever. Or you're looking at other people like, 
they're, they're in a better position than you and they got more than you. It's almost like kids at Christmas. It's, it's, it's like an adult version of kids at Christmas. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. It's yeah. absolutely true. We spoke about it before recording about, you know, myself and how I got rid of uh, social media for the same yeah. reason. I mean, all I really do is, is respond to emails from people. Um, yeah. But I got rid of social media on New Year's Eve because of a, uh, an ego perspective of you know this just feels like a highlight reel people want to post and I'm not I'm not you know condemning people for having Facebook because it's obviously globally popular but I think it's very popular because people it's almost like a popularity contest for me it looks like a popularity contest people want to take five minutes out of their day where they want to post something because they want to get one up on someone or they want to show the world that they are in a great place. Yep. But what people don't really see is the other, you know, 23 hours and 55 minutes of the day where that person could be in a really bad place. Yeah. But they just don't share it online. I think there's a stigma attached to, you know, not feeling good also. And you almost feel like you have to keep pace with the rest of the world. Like if you see a friend, a close friend, and they're posting something that they're doing really well, Mm. like they're having a family, all these different things, that can immediately put you under pressure. Yeah. It can put you in such an egotistical pressure of, like, yeah. that's my best friend. We're at the same age and they're doing this. So what's wrong with me that I'm not in the same place? Yeah. And you automatically start judging. You start realizing what have I not got. It puts yeah. you in a focus of what don't I have compared yeah. to this person. Yeah, self-judgment. Lead- yeah. yeah, of course. And that can lead you to a, to a post of, oh, I'm going to, you know, go one better than they've just posted because I need to look better than them. Mm. And that's just coming from a place of, you know, lacking energy as well. And it's yeah. really coming from a place of not loving yourself yeah. because and I know people as well who they, they've got a lot of, they, they compare themselves a lot to the outside world mm. and they compare themselves to everything that's going on outside of them. And if, if you take away that, if, you, if you've got that focus on what's going on outside of you, you take the focus on what's going on you take it off of what's going on inside of you. So you take the focus off yourself. You put you put everything on the other person. You put everything on outside of what's going on in you. Yeah. You put focus on I need to be at that level. That's that's the bar. I mean, for me there shouldn't be a bar. I think you should just consistently feel good about yourself and just let that raise and just go up and up and up and up. Mm. And then you just start feeling good you just feel good and it doesn't matter if anyone cares it doesn't matter if anyone is interested it doesn't really matter all that matters is how you feel about yourself and how good you feel about yourself without comparison yeah. without judgment yeah without reliance on anyone else to give you that mm. you just got it well you just feel good about yourself and i think maybe social media has a lot to answer for that because it seems like a popularity contest. Yeah. And I get the fact that, you know, people can use it to connect to people across the world. I mean, I've got, yes. I've even got a friend in New Zealand um, that I grew up with. She's amazing. Um, uh, but she's, I, I've known her since I was like 12, 13. And um, I met, she's the only pe- person I messaged when I got rid of Facebook I uh, messaged her saying, listen, I says, I'm going off Facebook, I'm getting rid of it. And I gave her my contact number. She wanted to WhatsApp me. It was like, oh. I'm, I'm just getting rid of this. And she appreciated yeah. that, you know. Yes. But I just, I just didn't, you know, people can use it for that, you know, connecting with people around the world, which I understand. Mm. It's when you start taking your eyes off that and you start focusing on others is when it becomes a problem. Yeah. For me, personally. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It does have such a positive aspect if it's used to, like you say, connect with people that you love and see where, you know, see them, what they look like now and to share those private messages and all of that. That's the good bit of Facebook, I think, is keeping those connections that would be more difficult to keep going, yeah. you know, and you can um, and, and you can do that. And that's the really uplifting, positive parts of social media. But yeah, yeah. it's you got to watch because it does tip both ways. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It really does. And I think yeah. it's important to, I think again, where that, that's where consciousness comes in, where you can take that step back and you can, you can actually see what's going on. Mm. I think if you're, if you're in Facebook unconsciously, that's when you get lost in the ego, the competition, the one-upmanship. Yeah. I think when you, 
consciously you can actually see what's unfolding and you don't but the thing is you see it without judgment as well mm. i mean I, I know i'm saying this is how i that's how i see facebook but i don't i don't judge people for it it's everyone's own life you, you let people yeah. be and they're going to live the way they want to live exactly but exactly. yeah it's just, there's no judgment attached to it you know what i mean but I think when you're in that unconsciously and there's an ego attachment to Facebook, it's when you start judging people. And then mm. you start, especially if you know someone and you know that they're posting, but they're not actually doing so great and they're posting mm. something that's fantastic. I think when you're lost in it unconsciously, that's when you start judging people and you start going, well, wait a minute, that person may have phoned me like an hour before mm. saying that they're feeling really bad or they're feeling terrible and then now they're posting saying they're great. You know, but you, I think you can get judge, you can get lost in judgment at that aspect. Mm. But when you when you watch it consciously, I mean, you know yourself. You've yeah. you're obviously part of the manifestors group, which is really good. Um, which I was also, mm. but again, for me, it, it was just a conscious decision to just get completely rid of this. I don't even. Yeah. It's a waste of time for me. It it bring it can it had the ability to bring my energy down. Yep. And anything that does that, I just need to eliminate from my life. And <clears throat> you, you automatically feel so much better. Yeah. Since that happened that day, I've just been totally soaring, positive energy, just feeling yeah. really good. Not attached to any social media, not attached to yeah. any outcome. Just and for me, I mean, I think a lot of people know my journey where it's been, you know, a specific person journey. We spoke about this also earlier. Um, for me, it's now a journey of actually having a desire for a relationship. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I want. I want a relationship with someone. I want. I want to settle down with someone. I want my own family. Mm. I want all these little things. That that's the desire. I yes. Think. yes. I came through the specific person journey, and it's evolved into this is the desire now. The yep. desire was never really the person. The desire was more what it represented. Yes. And I think you learn that over time as well. And and I, I came to the conclusion, especially that day, that if it's not to be with this person then so what, you know, I, I've, I want the relationship more than anything. And if it's not going to be with this person, then there is something or someone mm. out there that's going to represent so much more and be so much better to, for me, such a better vibrational match for me mm. that it's just, it's going to be magical and it's going to happen in a way that I couldn't even imagine it's going to happen. And that's going to be even better than what I expected. Mm-hmm. And Lovely. yeah, for me that just made a huge difference. It's yeah. a massive shift. It's a huge shift. Mm. And I think when you get to that shift as well, I think also that's when it becomes much more unconditional. Where it's like it doesn't have to be, you know, you put all your your focus on that person, and it has to be that person. Which there's nothing wrong with that because it, we've seen it works. We yeah. have seen it works. But I think for me. There was there was still an ego attachment of it's got to be this person, and that wasn't the true desire. I think I realised that on New Year's Eve that that's not the true desire. The true desire is the relationship. It's the settling down. It's the having your own family. It's raising you know your own children. It's about having love completely and um, oh. giving it to something you want to give it to, and just being in that state. And things have started developing for me personally. I've started feeling a lot better again, mm. going up levels, you know, meeting people, just feeling a little bit more love for myself and knowing, again, it's came from knowing my own self-worth and realising what I am worth yep. as a person, what I want to give to the world and what I want to give to people and not expect anything back. I want to give everything that I've got because I know that I'm a very loving person. Yeah, I know that I'm a very you know, I, I can radiate that out, I understand that, and I block out any time ego wants to get it back. I just want to give and give and give and give, and that's just how I feel energetically about it all. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like I want anything back from anyone. I know that what I'm going to, what I desire is what I'm going to get because I've studied it and I imagine it and yeah. I visualize it and it feels really good and I just walk in that state and things start evolving and things start feeling good as well. I mean, I... I was in work last Wednesday, excuse me, um, and my team leader said to me, he says, you're doing a really good job just now, keep it up, the work's not going unnoticed, you're doing well, and I was like, I didn't expect that, but it was good to be told, Yeah. And it, it all came from being in a good place, it's all came from naturally being 
good and self-loving and knowing your worth and knowing what you can do and not believing that you can't do anything. It's, it's believing that you can do anything you set your mind to mm. and believing you are, you are in control. You're in yeah. control of you. And that's all you need to be in control of. People, you know, you know yourself, people are trying to control situations and try to control other people and dictate how other people feel. You need to control. You can only control yourself. You can only yeah. control how you perceive things. You can only control how you feel about things. Yeah. And you, that that's it. That's all you can control. And if mm. you can control that properly about yeah. yourself, things will start working out much better for you. They'll start working out in a way you could never have imagined mm. before. Either. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that comes from a real place of self-love. I think this is where we sing a Scottish song together. <laughs> Are you going to sing it in an English accent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Friday night, Friday night was Burns night. Burns? Friday night was Burns, Robert Burns, the, the poet. Oh, Robert okay. Burns, yeah, was, yeah, they celebrate that 25th of January in Scotland. Nice. So it's a night where, um, yeah, people uh, they traditionally have haggis for dinner and stuff beautiful. and it's, they celebrate you know kind of like folk music and scottish poetry and stuff beautiful quite, uh, yeah that's that's scottish i know you were telling me recently you had australia day yeah that's that I, i'd never even knew that was a thing it was baffling i'm like what is australia day that's mental yeah. never heard of yeah. that before yeah, yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> there's some still some issues here about that because it's the british landing in australia and taking over the country australia day ah. not, not the aboriginal australia day which it should be so it's it's technically australia day but there's still some issues that you know the aboriginals still need to be acknowledged and that still has ah, okay. it has it still has a ways to go so right. technically ah, okay. it's australia day but it needs a bit of revision yeah right yeah. Ah, she. yeah Thank you. You learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the thing. You, we're all in different countries. And see, I didn't know about the haggis. <laughs> yeah. Haggis is very, I, I like it, but people, some people just think it's disgusting, which I, I get the point. If you, if you learned what was in it, you would go, you would, you wouldn't go near it. But um, yeah, it's a buns. It's actually, I didn't realize how popular it was. It was quite, it was quite a big event this year for some reason. There was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of focus and attention on it. But um, a lot of people don't really know what <laughs> Robert Burns was like. Actually, yeah. <laughs> he actually died of syphilis. So I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> <it's a> great, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure it's a great thing to celebrate. To be honest. With you. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, there you go. Well, there you I'm go. Not I'm not entirely sure he's a pioneer that Scottish people should be looking for. <laughs> Maybe I can put that put that in the description of the YouTube. Scottish Joe talks about Valentine's Day and syphilis. How about that? No, don't, 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 <laughs> oh, man. We always, uh, we always actually, end up somewhere where oh, we just don't think we're going to go, don't we, Joe? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we love a tangent. We absolutely love a tangent. Yeah, we love Dan. Dan, I always say to Dan, we do a main meal, and these are the side salads. So we said, absolutely. We, said, yeah. we always have too many side salads, and I said, no, yeah. that's what people. This is the stuff. The unexpected stuff is the fun stuff. So yeah, exactly. And the thing is, people probably didn't know about Australia Day unless you were no. Australian until now. People probably didn't know about Buns Night, exactly. and probably people didn't know about Robert Buns where he had syphilis. You know, all these different things keep coming up. See, all these random <laughs> exactly. things you don't you don't need to look up on Google now. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not limited to the self love, and we're not limited to Valentine's Day. Nope. This could go anywhere. This could, go, could go absolutely anywhere. anywhere, like a tumble, <laughs> like a tumbleweed. It just keeps yeah, exactly. rolling. <laughs> it just flows, but that you wouldn't have it any other way. I think it's no. more natural that way, isn't it? Everything just flows. It's a conversation. Yeah. It's a laugh. Yeah. People can, you know, people can relate to it. People yeah. can, you know, they just get absorbed by it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that, that's the most important thing. Is if it makes people feel good, also, and they see yeah. people laughing. Well, you, know, you know, Joe, it was your sec I think it was your first interview, your second interview from from with you and me. Um, our mutual person that we know, Humphrey. Um, yeah. He talked about because you were in a on a black background and you had black hair. He said he he was laughing because it looked like a floating head. So he, <laughs> he, That's why I've changed he, the top for today. 
<laughs> he emailed me and he said, ha, 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 I love Joe's interview. It was a floating head. And I thought, what is he talking about? What's he talking about? And I went back and I looked and I went, oh, now I could see it. Because when we were doing it, I had a <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing! Yeah, <laughs> random. Oh, it was great. Yeah. yeah, it was funny. It was funny. So I will put both the interviews that you yeah, and I have done. Yeah, it was. I'll put the interviews down below. So if anyone wants to see the floating head, they can go and watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, because it. I've almost evolved. I mean, this is the third video. The first video, there was nothing. The second video, yeah. I thought I'll just have my head in that there, yeah. and then maybe a couple of hands about like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then people can fill in the pieces themselves so maybe the next one i'll stand up and people can see the whole body <laughs> they can see you from the waist up yeah exactly yeah yeah we'll, uh, we'll give them snippets just little yeah. snippets here and there yeah slow just release. <laughs> slow release. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's been amazing oh, always is fantastic fabulous. it's always a laugh fabulous. It's great but yeah it's so before, um, uh, before we go do you is there anything else you want to throw into the ring um uh, no i think i've told everyone they need they need to know about robert burns so i think we can probably <laughs> leave that there <laughs> I, might, I might put a link down down if i can find one about him there must be something on google about him oh yeah there'll be a wikipedia page or something like that <laughs> something there's always something for everyone you know exactly. um I'd, all I probably really want to share before we finish up is just a, a thank you again to yourself. Um, I've really enjoyed the, the chance again. Um, obviously, if you want to fire my email in again and people can ask me questions yeah. because I've had a lot of good feedback and I want to thank people for their feedback from that video. Yeah. Um, it's always really, it really encourages me to, to keep doing what I'm doing and to mm. help people in any way I can. And I want to continue to do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, probably just fire an email in there again. Um, it's really, it's really encouraging to know that I'm, that I'm making a difference to people, and um, there's no, you know, there's no real des other desire than that. I just want to be here to help people and just give people as much advice and assistance as I can. Currently, um, yeah. I'm also looking at maybe just exploring other things in the future as well, which I'll probably share with you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but yeah, it's um, it's been great. I think probably the main t takeaway is. You know, for me, as I've said to summarize, Valentine's Day, it's not just a one day thing for me. It should be a thing where it's just a natural flow of just giving love to people and wanting people to feel that about themselves more than anything and yeah. giving that to someone from a place of giving it and not expecting the receipt of it. Mm. You know, just wanting to give them the love to that people and just, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Just just love yourself and give it to others as much as you can yeah. but don't expect anything to turn because if you can give it to yourself that's probably the best gift you can give yourself mm. <clears throat> amen yeah <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. thank you for yeah. coming and just being thank you again you know, thank you for the opportunity uncensored uncensored what you know because i think you know, women don't know, or if you're in a gay couple, you don't always know. You just assume, and, and those assumptions could be, you could be confidently wrong about your assumptions about Valentine's Day in relation to, you know, whether you're dating the same sex or the opposite sex, you could be confidently yes. wrong. So it's good to hear it, and not everybody has the same ideas. That's the thing. So that's important. Yes, too. yes. But everybody sees also, it the same way. Yeah, but also bear in mind as well, if you... As Neville says, you persist in that assumption, it hardens into fact. Yep. So if you make a negative <laughs> assumption and you persist in that, then that will come to pass because that is your assumption, that is your reality. So I think it's, that's probably the best thing to end on, that people make yeah. that assumption on the other person. That's yeah. a projection on the other person. And if you persist in that assumption and projection, yeah. that's what you're going to get. So you change, you change your belief, you change your assumption, you assume yeah. the best about people, you assume the best about yourself, and that is what you will get in return. I can hear Neville. That's how we finish up. Neville's clapping. <laughs> I can hear him. <laughs> <laughs> he just said, he said, Joe, that's exactly right. He's clapping. <laughs> He's sitting there having a whiskey with Robert Burns. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you. 
Thank and you. And we will sign off and say, you want to say bye to the viewers, Joe, first? You go ahead. Yeah, goodbye. Um, as I said, the email will probably be in the description. Yep. Um, look forward to hearing from people. Looking forward to hearing the feedback. Beautiful. And it's been a pleasure. And for those that are going to celebrate it, the way they celebrate it, have a good Valentine's Day. It's fabulous. I agree. Thank you, Joe. And viewers, as always, to be continued in the next YouTube.